In this lecture, we're going to take the time to install the MySQL database server. Along with that, we'll also install the J connector so that we can connect via Java code to our database server. And we'll also be installing the MySQL Workbench, which is a utility that allows us to administer and perform queries against our MySQL server. And before we do this, I want to make two quick announcements for those of you who might not want to do this at this point. If you are anxious to get started with web programming, you could go ahead and skip this video for now. We won't be using the MySQL server for some time in our coding, so you could go ahead and get started and come back and do this video at that time if you so desire. The other thing I want to say is if you're at a point where your machine is running out of memory or running out of space and you just simply don't want to put another thing on your machine, I could certainly understand that as well. So there is another option available to you. What you could do is actually start at the Heroku site and you can go there and actually create yourself a Heroku password and user ID. Now Heroku is a separate third party company. They do web application hosting and they allow you to have add-ons including the MySQL server database. And if you did want to upload your programs, you could use what's called the Git, G-I-T, source control program to actually push your code out to the web and then you'd have a hosted application on the web. Now, of course, they do want to make some money, so some of that stuff might cost money if you start using too much of an instance or anything like that. So that's beyond the scope of our course. Furthermore, what I wanted to do was bring us here so that I could just show you that if you do create a Heroku account, you can also then create an application and you can create an add-on for that application for a MySQL database instance that's shared, and that would be free. However, in order to do that, even for a free instance, they do require that you put in a credit card. And I know that a lot of people would raise a red flag to that or not want to do that at this point, and I'm certainly okay with that. So it is an option available to you. Just be aware that you would have to put in a credit card even if you never spend a dime in order to get that MySQL instance. Once you have that, of course, that would give you the credentials to then use your connection, and you wouldn't need MySQL directly on our machine. So assuming that we want to put MySQL on our machine, then what we're going to do is go ahead and complete that install at this time. First, before we install, though, we want to make sure that we have our prerequisites in place. So I went to dev.mysql.com slash resources slash wb52 underscore prerequisites.html. On this page for the Windows machine that I'm using, it's listing two prerequisite programs. Number one is the Microsoft.NET Framework 4 client profile. Hopefully, most people that are running Windows would already have that installed anyway. And the Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 redistributable package x86. Now that is important because most people won't have that installed. And so you'll probably need to get this, and when you click on this, it'll give you options for other things to download, including the x64 version. Now in order for MySQL to work, we definitely need the x86 32-bit version. Additionally, pay attention and make sure that you get the 2010 version, not the 2012 version, as there is a difference, and the 2010 is the one that we need. So if you click on this to download, it would bring up a page and ask you if you want to install anything else. Just don't select any of the other ones. Go ahead and install. It's a very easy install, and then you'll be done. Now, if you want to verify that you have these installed before you get started, all you need to do is go to your Start menu, select your Control Panel, and select to uninstall a program. Now, this is where everything's listed that's installed, and you can see right now I already have the Microsoft.NET Framework 4 Client Profile and the Visual C++ 2010 x86 Redistributable also installed. So I have my prerequisites met, which means I'm ready to go. So the next thing I'm going to do then is go to dev.mysql.com slash downloads. And here I'm going to select the MySQL community server. Now this is the free version that's available, and you can select which platform that you want to install to. I'm, of course, Microsoft Windows, so I'll select that. And I'm actually going to select the Windows x86 64-bit MySQL installer MSI. So I'll go ahead and download that, which will give me a quick installation program. But of course, there's one more final choice to make. Here it asks me, do I want to use the web community, which is 1.5 megs, or the regular community, which is 191.5 megs? Now, the difference between these is if you have a web connection, you can actually just use this top one, and you can do a quicker download, and it will download components as you go. If you don't think you'll have a web connection for whatever reason, or you just want to download it in full beforehand, go ahead and get this other one, 191.5 megabyte version. I do have a web connection, which I'm going to rely on, so I'm going to go ahead and download this top one. The next step then is I have to log into my Oracle account. Now, an Oracle account is completely free as well, so if you don't have one, you could sign up for one. I do have one. I've created one previously for different installations, and you may have done that when you installed the JDK before, or you may have one for other reasons. Simply log in and get the download. I don't think it's important for you to see my credentials, so I'm going to pause it. I'm going to click the login. I'm going to put in my credentials, and then I'll start the video back up once I've got to the download page from successfully logging into Oracle.
So I've successfully logged in, so now I'm going to click the download, which will give me the light version of the installer. Once I do that, I can go ahead and get this started. Let's run that, and we'll just leave this up in the background here. The MySQL installer will ask us for permission and for administrator permission a couple times throughout. So go ahead and give those permissions, and we'll get to a screen where it asks us to install the products, and that's where we'll join back up. I'm going to pause the video while we get to that point. So now we're here, we can install the MySQL products. So of course we want to read through the license information about our new MySQL server software. We're going to accept the terms and select next. And then it will connect to the internet and check for product updates, which is great. You can actually opt out of that if you wish, but there's no need to. Let's go ahead and leave that unchecked and hit execute, and that will take little or no time. And then what you can see is that we have different selections that are available to us. So here we have the developer default, which is going to include MySQL Server, MySQL Workbench, the Visual Studio plugin, the connectors for Java, which is the most important one that we care about, the examples and tutorials, which will give us some example databases, and the documentation. You can also select just the server if you were going to run a standalone server, just the client if you were going to use Heroku, for instance, and you just want the Workbench and the connectors. You could probably go this route. The full version will give you everything. The custom version, of course, you could select. For our course, we'll just rely on the developer default and leave the path in place. And so once we get here, it just verifies that we have the correct prerequisites. So go ahead and execute, and it'll tell us that it's met. Click Next. And then we get the fun part of installing all the different utilities. So again, what we really care about is the server, the connector J, and the samples and examples that we'll be using. So let's go ahead and execute. And once again, this is going to take some time to complete the installation. So I'll go ahead and pause the video while this is taking place, and we'll join back once all these have installed. All right, so our installations have completed. I did have one error on the connector ODBC, which was basically a file permission error. I'm not going to take the time to troubleshoot that right now. We won't be needing this for our course anyway. So what we really care about is the server, the workbench, the connector J, the samples and examples, and those did all install correctly, and I'll be able to run and work with the machine just fine without the ODBC connector for this time being. So now I need to do my configuration. So this will take just a moment, but basically what we need to do is set up the machine the way we want it. So we'll leave it development machine, which will use the minimal amount of memory. You could set it up as a server or a dedicated machine if you were doing that for some reason. We'll leave the networking in place. We'll also leave the port open, even though most likely we won't be doing anything that we'll need to be connecting from a remote location, but we will leave the default port 3306. And we'll go ahead and allow to see the advanced options. I've already installed MySQL Server before, and I've downloaded and uninstalled it so that I could do this video. So I have a current root password in place. You won't see that. What you'll just see is the two to create the MySQL root password and repeat it. So make sure that you do set up a root password because essentially what's going to happen is that password is going to be what we'll use to connect. We aren't going to set up a user, although we could at this point. We can also set up users using the MySQL Workbench program later when we need a specific user for a specific application, for instance. Right now, we'll just worry about our root user. Just make sure to give it a password that you remember, write it down if you can't remember it, or just use your normal password schema. Of course, we'll just leave the Windows service name alone. We'll start at System Startup. Now, again, if you want to minimize your boot time, you could turn this off and then manually start it as needed, and that's fine, especially if you aren't using this very often, and we won't be using it again until later in the course. So you might want to leave that off, but I'm going to go ahead and leave mine on so it will just automatically start and run every time I boot my machine. And I'm going to use the standard system account. The error logs that we'll have are going to be your machine name for the error log, and I'm going to leave slow query log on. You could turn on general log and binary log if you'd like. There's not going to be much that we'll be doing with that, but you could certainly turn those on if you want to. And you can see that the product will configure. The services list changed. It will start the service, MySQL 56. And then we're going to go ahead and install our samples and examples as well. And those will go ahead and install just a couple sample databases for us that we can double check and make sure everything is working as expected. So once again, this takes just a moment and it should snap to completion here. So we're done with that and everything is set up and ready to go. Now, if you've had an error, of course, you could copy the log to the clipboard or you could copy it anyway and just save that file in case you want to read it back later. And it does allow us to start the MySQL Workbench after setup. So we're going to go ahead and do that this time just because I'm going to demonstrate that to you here. So now this will start the program, but if you did want to find the program, of course you could go to your start menu and you should be able to just type work and it should find Workbench 6.0, which is what we're using. 
And you'll see here that you have different connections that you can actually configure and administer. Your local instance is the local machine that we've just set up. When you open this the first time, your root password will not be saved. And so it will ask you to enter the password and there will be a checkbox that says always save this into memory, into the archive. And so if you do that, you don't need to keep re-entering it. And so I've already done that at one point. So mine won't ask me for my password. It will just go ahead and log me in. But you'll need to enter your password and you should be able to log in as the root user. I've also set the world database at this time as my default database by right clicking on this schema over here and saying set as default schema. And that allows me to quickly query to prove that things are working. So here I have my city table in my world database and I can simply say select star from city. And that will allow me to just query the table really quickly and we can see that everything is up and running. So with that, we know that our server has been installed correctly and our root password is all set up the way we need it and our database is up and running. We are able to connect to it and work against it. The one thing we wanna just make sure we're aware of is where that service lives. Of course, you can always manage your service. So if you need to start it manually or stop it manually or change whether or not you want it to be automatic on startup or disabled on startup, you could then go into your server here and manage your services. So again, this takes just a moment to pop up and you just select your services, look for the MySQL service once these populate, and you can see that it is started, it is automatic, but you could change that, and again, if you did not select to start manually, you could come here at the start of any programming that you needed to do and start the service manually, and thereby have your server up and running as needed.